They know they can't live without the United States, uh, but they want to have the United States come to them on their terms. Uh, you know, for every story that we hear about how the Chinese economy is reviving, there are stories that we also hear that don't match up with the official data. Uh, iconic places on, on Nanjing Road in, in Shanghai uh, that have long been establishments that serve the elites of business yeah. are starting to shut down because there's no business. And they really need to have our import-export policies in place because they need stuff from the United States just as much as the United States needs stuff from You them. are expert at this, Bill Lee, and I know Hong Kong gets all the attention and the emotion of the British and that, but you just zeroed in on Shanghai. Are we looking for a jump condition change from Beijing to say, OK, we didn't mean it. Let's get back to business. Or is this some slow motion incremental soap opera? In fact, the jump condition I'm actually seeing is that for, you know, a lot of people say, you know, the secondary cities are, are, are not doing so well, but that's OK because the primary cities of Shanghai, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, uh, those are the p places where businesses are really booming and they're doing fine. And that's what the official storyline has been. And every official meeting you see uh, that, that the, the Chinese authorities have held have peddled that story. But the story on the ground, when you look at the shopping malls in these elite places, they're not doing well. Mm. I have some friends who are trying to sell property in some of the prime places in Beijing, and they're starting off with bids that are 30, 40 percent off their, their, their asking price. And even there, they're not getting much, uh, much activity. So the, the situation on the ground with the people who live there and the people who are doing businesses there uh, is really quite different from the official picture. And Bill, I think what a lot of our listeners and viewers like myself are probably confused about, we see a very hard line coming from China, it seems like, by and large, as it relates to their view of Capitalism. I just think about you know kind of how they dealt with the technology industry a few years ago in Alibaba and all those companies. Yet at the same time, we see leading U.S. executives Tim Cook, uh, uh, the fellow from Tesla, going over to China and trying to maintain and develop ties there. Where does the government really want to take this thing? President Xi has a campaign to what he he's trying to put in what he calls new productive forces into the Chinese economy that will push them into the bleeding edge, the leading edge of technology. The most important industries will be the high tech industries, the high value added industries, so that the, the declining population in China will be having uh, occupations and jobs that are in high salary uh, 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 occupations. What we are seeing in reality is that they really can't get this stuff in place without first reviving the Chinese economy. You can't get that kind of technological change and productivity change with an economy that is in the doldrums and where GDP growth, you know, as much as the official numbers are, you know, five plus, uh, the actual numbers are closer to three plus. So should we expect or should, I guess, you know, American and Western CEOs expect any meaningful change in the next several years here? Because again, it seems like the U.S. and the West, is are, we're in a pretty strong position vis-a-vis -vis China just in terms of negotiating leverage. That's a very important point, Paul. Um, the current businesses that are there in China are realizing that President Xi's new China is going to involve a lot more in the way of state enterprises being in the in the driver's seat. Uh, the smaller private sector companies are asked to merge with their counterparts on the official side. So everyone that's doing business there knows they have to curry the favor of local authorities because that's where their new contracts are coming from. Uh, and, and I think you're seeing Tim Cook go over there, opening up a new branch, uh, a new Apple store, probably one of the biggest in, in Asia, in Shanghai. But at the same time, that same shopping mall is seeing stores close left and right in, on, on, you know, in private, as private businesses are starving for business. So, so I think the, the new mantra for businesses going into China would be, you know, help the state-owned enterprises become more efficient, uh, do whatever managerial magic you can to, help, to right. have them come up in productivity. But is, tr is, is sanctity of contracts still valid versus joint venture tragedies of recent decades? As, as, as you know, Tom, the sanctity of contracts in China depends upon who you know in the, ju in the judicial system. And, right. and whether or not you are currying the favor and, and your policies are in line with those of the, of the Communist Party vision of where China is going. If you're helping <clears throat> Chinese companies promote their activities, your contracts will be enforced 
full full force. If you are hitting off on your own right. and trying to carve out a share of the Chinese market for yourself without involving the Chinese right. uh, state-owned enterprises, your contracts are likely not going to be held. 